Well, oftentimes business education today, and I see it all the time, kids come out of college, the best colleges, Wharton and Harvard and Stanford and some of the great business schools, and they'll come out and they won't have practical experience. There's too many case studies that aren't practical. You know, we ask uh, kids that are 16 to 18 years old to make $100,000 debt decisions when they go off to university. And they're not prepared for that. They don't know what they're getting themselves into. They just assume, okay, I'm gonna pay four years of education at 25,000 a pop, and when I come out the other side, somehow I'll be able to pay it back. Right. That's not how life works anymore. There's no need even to have a college degree oh, well, okay. at all. Uh, or even high school. The, um, I mean, if somebody graduated from a great university, that may be an indi that may be an indication that they will be capable of great things, but mm -hmm. it's not necessarily the case. Um, you know, if you look at, um, say, people like uh, Bill Gates, or Larry Ellison, Steve Jobs, these guys didn't graduate from college. Oh, Jobs, yeah. But if yeah. you had a chance yeah. to hire them, of course, that would be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think having the flexibility to explore a lot of different things, which you can do when you're in college, which is one of the amazing things about being in college, is you can work on all these hobbies um, and, and, and code a lot of stuff and, and try a lot of different things. It's this amazing flexibility that I think most people take for granted. And once you decide, okay, I'm going to start a company and I'm going to do it with someone else, you immediately now need to convince someone else if you want to change your mind on something. And I, I think people really undervalue the option value and flexibility. I, I think explore what you want to do before committing is really like the, the key thing. And Keep yourself flexible, um, and no, I think that that's. Yeah, I, I mean, agree. It, yeah, I mean it's actually kind of funny. Like, like um, you know, if you think of like what is education? Like you're basically downloading data and algorithms into your brain, and it's 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 actually amazingly bad in conventional education because like it shouldn't be like this huge chore. Um, you know, someone's standing up there kind of lecturing at people, um, and they've done the same lecture 20 years in a row and they're not very excited about it. And um, in fact, I think a lot of things people learn are probably there's no point in, in learning them. Because um, they, they, they never use them in, uh, in the future. Because a lot of kids just in, in school kind of puzzled as to why yeah. they're there. <laughs> the people who are doing the work that we care about are figuring out what to do next, not following the person who told them what to do next. And the problem with most colleges is they are high school, but with more binge drinking. The entire purpose of a good university is to give you a foundation to fail not a foundation to get an A. Mm -hmm. And if you graduate from college with straight A's, you have to do some serious soul searching as to why you chose to spend your time doing that. The A students work for the B students, the C students run the businesses, and the D students dedicate the buildings. <laughs> it's like the newspaper industry, right? More printing presses, more big buildings, right? Makes us look grander. We have brains that we're putting them out there. There's, there's a point of diminishing returns in terms of what it's worth for a college education and how much debt you're willing to saddle yourself with. A lot of people follow. A lot of people are followers, generally. If not, we'd have problems. We have too many entrepreneurs. We have too many successful people. Like, look how many people go through business classes. If everything you needed was in that actual business class, mm -hmm. in that book, it'd be too many successful business people. Right. <laughs> how many people graduate? Matter of fact, the professor wouldn't have the time to sit there and teach you. Then knows this book damn near verbatim. Page by page, he knows it, right? Because he'd be an entrepreneur. Yeah, he's too busy. <laughs> I'm too, I'm doing way too much right, right now because I got the palm trees and, the and we doing, we selling so much right. of stuff that I'm doing that I ain't quite got time to teach no mother class right now because I'm winning. And so when you walk into a boardroom with a bunch of guys in suits who all went to college, you're fine. Yeah, I mean, because they read a bunch of words. I've lived a bunch of life. <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Their law degree doesn't yeah. intimidate you. Yeah. 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 It, right. it, it kind of evens us out, whether they know it or not. Where uh, do you think you get that self-esteem from? Seriously. I mean, most my guys... My mom, first and foremost, but right. then just living life. Like, you know, being in real situations and having to be a person of high integrity and honesty and, you know... You, you never know, embarrassed yourself? No, of course not. You, you, you no. never walked in and said, oh, everybody thinks I, I, I'm ignorant here. I'm stupid. I, 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 never, I, don't, I've, I don't feel ignorant. Right. You know, I, I don't. Right. I felt like I came up in a situation um, or, or a time, you know, where I wasn't afforded certain opportunities. And if afforded opportunities, I could be Oprah. I could be uh, Bill Gates. I could be Warren Buffett. In my experience... In business, there is very little difference, if any, between a very high-priced business education 
and what's available a lot, for a lot less money. I went to the University of Nebraska at Lincoln my last year in college. I went to Wharton for a couple of years before that. Uh, uh, I learned just as much at the University of Nebraska as I did at Wharton. Uh, you, you need to be prodded in the right direction, but an awful lot of it is, 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 is self is self-taught. It isn't necessary to pay thirty or thirty-five thousand dollars a year to go to some uh, big-name school to get the education at all. I mean, if you're going to learn accounting, if you're going, which is probably the most important course you'd take in business, if you're going to learn accounting, you can learn accounting absolutely as well. In my view, going to UNO is going to to Harvard. I mean, I, I see. Uh, I, I, w I would. I'd bet on that. And uh, uh, so, I wouldn't run up huge bills. And education is very good at uh, training people to do the same things that we've done over and over again. Uh, and I think there's always a question what the nature of the educational good is. Um, uh, you know, you can say it's, a, it's an investment good, we're investing in the future. You can say it's a consumption good, like college is a four-year party. You know, I think most of the parents and students think of it actually as an insurance policy where you're buying this really ever more expensive insurance so that uh, the students don't fall through the really big cracks in our society and, and we should be asking some big questions why the insurance costs are going up and up like that. And if you were the president of Harvard or Stanford, if you wanted to get um, a lynch mob of students, alumni, faculty to come after you uh, and try to lynch you, what you should say is something like this. You know, we, we live in this much larger, more global world. Uh, we offer a great education to everybody, and so we're going to double or triple our enrollment over the next 15 to 20 years. Uh, and people would, they'd all be furious because the value of the degrees comes from this massive exclusion. Um, and, and what you're really running is something like a, a Studio 54 nightclub. I hated, I hated school. I really hated school. I, re well, I hated school, generally, right? Because it was this instruction following thing. Now, I, I bet you it's probably also because I wasn't good at it. And some people, like I've got a, a great conceptual memory and a terrible rote memory. So if I have a story, I could tell you year by year kind of what happened um, within a story, within a context. Uh, but if I was to go into, you know, like a memory-based learning, it's terrible. I, I have a terrible rote memory. Ego barrier is the worst thing. And if we were raised differently, just imagine in the schools that uh, all along that people will always say, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has weaknesses. The key is really to understand what your mistakes and weaknesses are so that you can learn from them, right? I think in, in punishment is a, is, a, is a terrible concept. Punishment means that you made a mistake and you're being punished. I think instead of punishment, every time somebody makes a mistake, you, just, you should say the only thing that you need to do um, to get out of your punishment is first think, what kind of mistake was that? So if I'm in a situation that's like that again, um, how would I do, deal with it differently not to make that mistake? So that learning should come from the mistake, not punishment, because you're teaching people not to make mistakes, where's where the learning comes from. Not the appreciation that if you keep doing this over and over again, you're gonna keep encountering the same outcomes. You know, it's an extremely uh, corrupt system we have at this point. There's, we have an education bubble. In the US, we have a trillion dollars of, of student debt. Uh, to a first approximation, this has gone to pay for a trillion dollars worth of lies about the value of the education people have received. Um, and um, and I, it's not at all obvious yet, though, what's going to, what's going to replace this or how it's going to change. Um, my, um, you know, the, the uh, you know, the, I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat skeptical that it will be replaced by any sort of single unitary system. I, mean, I, have, I have this fellowship for uh, young people to st uh, start companies. Um, and you know, it's not, my claim is not that everybody should do this. I don't think everyone should become an entrepreneur. And I, th I think there is no one size fits all. I think, so I think the future will be much more heterogeneous, much more diverse in terms of what people do. Um, and uh, what's, what's really anomalous is the sort of unitary tracking where you have to go to an elite college, you go to Yale or you go to jail, there's nothing else you can do, you know? Um, and so the, the, uh, I think the universities are perhaps in um, 
perhaps in the same place as the Catholic Church was in 1514, if we go back 500 years, where uh, you have sort of this monolithic way, this universal uh, way of uh, body of knowledge of teaching things. The difference between the Yale and the Harvard political science faculties are probably no greater than the, the differences between the Dominicans and the Franciscans. So we have all kinds of small debates within this context. Um, uh, we, are, we have a system of indulgences uh, that's costing more and more to support this priestly or professorial class of people. Uh, we are told that uh, it's the only way to salvation. Um, you must get a diploma to be saved. If you do not get a diploma, then you will go to hell. Um, and I think, um, and I think, the, uh, I think the, the, the message that I have that's uh, like the 16th century reformers, that's a somewhat troubling message, is that uh, you have to work out your salvation on your own. You have to save yourself. And, uh, and, and that's, that's, I, th I believe that is the truth, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a somewhat uncomfortable one.